Welcome back. Now we will discuss why is empirical software engineering hard. In this part one, I will show how digging deeper alters conclusions. Let's start by looking into two software quality assurance techniques, namely software testing and software inspection. Okay. Let's start out by quickly looking at the definitions of those two techniques. Software testing involves execution of a software component or a system component to evaluate one or more properties of interest. In general, these properties indicate the extent to which the component or system under test meets certain requirements such as the absence of errors. Inspections, on the other hand, refer to peer review of any work product by trained individuals who look for defects using a well-defined process. So a key difference here is that in review, individuals study documents or source code to find errors, while in software testing, software is executed to find defects or to figure out whether it's ready to be used in a real industrial environment. Finally, in order to not to be confused, you should bear in mind that software reviews and software inspections are synonyms with slight differences, being that software inspections are more heavily following a rigorous process, whereas software reviews are sort of more flexible. But in practice, the terminology is used uh, quite uh, liberally. So we are interested in finding out whether software inspections or software testing are more effective in finding defects. We have data from Ericsson Microwave. This data comes from 2003 paper by Berlin and Telly. You can see the citation on the slide. This is a study of defects detected in document reviews and testing over two years. During this time, a small team spent 888 days of programming and 1568 days in quality assurance activities. The number of defects detected are listed as follows. 244 defects detected in reviews and 54 defects were detected during system testing. If we were to stop the analysis here, what could we conclude? Obviously, the conclusion should say that reviews are superior as they find more defects. Based on the given information, such conclusion is correct. But some of you may be wondering, shouldn't we include more data into the analysis? Is there a particular piece of data that might be missing here? Indeed, a very important piece of information was missing from the previous slide. The slide did not include effort spent on reviews or software testing. Now we have added the information on the time spent for reviews and testing, and we can compute how many defects were detected by 100 hours of each quality assurance technique performed. We can find that 355 hours were spent on reviews. This means that defect detection rate per 100 hours of software reviews is 68.7 defects. Numbers for testing show that 1104 hours were spent on testing, resulting defect detection rate of 0.47 defects per 100 hours. The only sensible conclusion at this point 
is that reviews are farly superior to software testing as 100 hours of reviews results finding 68.7 defects while the same effort spent on testing only results in finding 0.47 defects per 100 hours. If I would be a software reviews consultant trying to convince you on the importance and benefits of software reviews, I would stop my presentation here. However, some of you might be wondering, is there more information to this story? Can the difference really be so big? Indeed, more information is available. From the paper we can find that the types of defects found in the document reviews would not all propagate to code. As all of such defects would not propagate to code, it means that software testing could not detect those defects. Indeed, if we only consider the 18% of defects that would propagate to code, we get recomputed values, finding that the effectiveness of software reviews drops from 68.7 defects per 100 hours to 12.7 defects per 100 hours. Still, this is clearly superior than software testing's 0.47 defects per 100 hours. However, the drop in the effectiveness of reviews is rather dramatic. Still, the conclusion at this point would be that software reviews are much more efficient than software testing. There is even more data to this story. In the paper it is reported that there are different types of testing that were done at Ericsson Microwave. There are, in fact, four different types of testing activities. Looking at the effort distribution of those testing activities and the defects found reveals an interesting pattern. For example, we can see that testing 1 detects 20 defects by only using 202 testing hours, whereas testing 3 finds 24 defects but uses 700 and 300 hours. Oh, excuse me, obviously I meant to say 7300 hours. Okay. Now we get some recomputed efficiency values for 100 hours of work. We can find that software reviews finds 12.7 defects. In testing 1, we find 10.0 defects. In testing 2, the number is 0.7. In testing 3, it is 0.3. And in testing 4, it is 0.0. Okay, so what is our conclusion at this point? we can see that reviews and testing 1 are almost equally good in detecting software defects. And therefore, we could conclude that Ericsson Microwave should get rid of, rid of testing 2, testing 3 and testing 4, as they are wasting a lot of effort there. But further information from the paper tells us that the case company Ericsson makes high reliability products. Therefore, finding the last defects is expensive, but mandatory in their domain. Therefore, the idea of getting rid of the last testing phases, that is testing 2, testing 3, testing 4, might not be a good business decision. To explain why the number of defects comes down so quickly in the quality assurance process, we need to remember that in quality assurance, the technique which is applied first always seems more effective, simply for the reason because there are more defects 
to be found. So the defects which are found in reviews are removed and they cannot be no longer found in testing. Then the defects which are found in testing one are removed and therefore they cannot no longer be found in testing two. And so on. So it becomes increasingly more difficult to find new defects as simply the defects that have been found have been already taken away so there is almost no defects to be found in the end or the defects that are there are extremely difficult to find and occur in some very special cases only. Another important piece of information is that inspection and testing find different defects. Inspections can reveal problems that do not cause immediate runtime failures. That might be related to software evolvability and maintainability or security of the code. While testing can reveal defects that are difficult to identify in inspection, which could be related to dynamic properties of the system or in complicated interactions. As the defects found by testing and the defects found by reviews are only partially overlapping, the idea that we could use the efficiency numbers, number of defects detected per hour, and say which one is better, is rather naive. We could also continue digging even deeper. In the previous slides, I have given all the information that was available in the paper but we could go and ask further questions. For example, are the same people involved in both processes? What is the skill of these people with respect to testing and reviews? What types of tools and techniques are used in te testing and in reviews? This could give further information on the effectiveness of these quality assurance techniques and indicate ways to improve the use of these quality assurance techniques. So what are the lessons learned here? I think there are two lessons to be learned. First, as we continue digging deeper and asking more questions about the people or are asking more questions from the data, we find new conclusions that were not obvious from the start. First, as we continue digging deeper and asking more questions about the people or are asking more questions from the data, we find new conclusions that were not obvious from the start. This means that in software engineering research, you should not stop on the first answer that comes to your way. Second lesson to be learned is that questions like are inspections more effective than software reviews is not accurate enough to be meaningful. This is because the context in which the techniques are applied affects their effectiveness. And often accurate comparisons are not even possible in the industrial setting. 